th this topic, low budget filmmaking, and how to make them so that they, that they work within their means is something I've been talking about since I've been making films. I coined a phrase with my colleague, Ted Hope, uh, that both of, us, both of us claim credit for. And <laughs> both of us feel like it's kind of come back, back to haunt us a bit, which is the phrase, let your budget be your aesthetic. The, the key, ultimately, I think, to a successful low-budget film is a film that makes its limitations work in its favor. Now, things have changed so much since I started in 91 making Poison and Swoon. We didn't, you know, we had to shoot on film. We had no alternative. Um, and you guys have a lot more alternatives, um, you know, which is, has its pluses and minuses. But what it meant was, and, and I think continues to mean, is a low budget film shouldn't show its limitations. It should take those limitations and make them work in service to the narrative. Ultimately, what I am looking for, uh, when I read a script, I am trying to figure out if it's something, it's something really original and fresh, if I feel like I really haven't seen it before. If the director, even if it's a team, presumably I'm going to have to spend a tremendous amount of time with them, so they have to be somebody who I feel can go the distance. Um, and, you know, how do you define what makes you know that a first-timer has it? I don't know. I guess ultimately it's, it's that they have the ability not just to speak about um, their vision in a compelling way, but to make it clear to other people what they're trying to get on screen. In other words, when we made Boys Don't Cry, Kim Pierce had never been on a film set before, and um, I mean, you know, she couldn't tell a grip stand from a, you know, from a walkie-talkie. But who cares? I mean, that kind of stuff, that, that kind of thing we can provide support for. What she could do, which was critical, was translate her vision to her team, to her cinematographer, her production designer, her costume designer, etc. She could make it clear to them what she was trying to do, and that is essential. But then the last thing, really, to bring it back to what I'm looking for, is it has to be something that I feel I can sell. So you have to think about, is it, is this something I can get a great, actor, a great actress to attach themselves to, or, or actor to attach themselves to? Um, is this a story that has some kind of resonance that you know, I, can, I can get people interested in? It, producing is such an unsung art form. I mean, it, it certainly doesn't get the kudos that you know, the other, the other you know, that writers and directors do. The thing is, if, if, if somebody says to you, I'm going to put, I've decided I'm going to put a million, I'm going to invest a million dollars into your film, I really believe in it, but I'd like a co-director credit, <laughs> you know, the response would be like, what are you, out of your mind? <laughs> but the frequently it is, I would like a co-producer credit, and the response is, okay. You know, no problem. So that's why, that's part of why it's so hard. And um, I, I mean, a really great producer, especially these days where financing has become so complicated and global, I mean, having, having a working knowledge of that, of, you know, uh, of the, all the different kinds of ways you can put it together a movie, and have a working knowledge of how to best protect you know, a movie so that it can make its way from the page to the screen, I mean, it's, it's a lot. And I'm, I'm finding more and more that I work, it's, I need to work with co-producers, you know, sort of so that we can tag team a little bit the, you know, the, the talent end and the financing end. Um, really, the way you make your money as a producer is either with your upfront fee on a studio movie, and you could argue, why would you, you know, defer money when you're making a, a movie for, you know, 20th Century Fox, which is what Searchlight is, no matter what it says it is. Um, so, so there's that. But the other way is to make a film that you finance independently and then sell it for a lot of money.
you know, um, like with Boys Don't Cry, we made it for two million, we sold it for five million. Nobody really got rich off it, but we all got our fees. Um, and, uh, and that, but when you make a movie for a studio, it's, it is um, naive to believe that they'll really, no matter how well the movie does, that there'll be anything, that it'll really trickle down. Because the studio's whole setup is kind of, you know, it, it, it's basically to prevent there ever being a profit. 